Hi everyone and welcome to a quick Transport Fever 2 map tutorial covering how to make realistic maps with height maps and also with the brush tools that they offer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the map editor. We're going to choose a one-to-one -one size but I'm going to choose a large map. It's kind of a guess because I'm going to match what Terrain Party shows with this map size here. So we're going to go one to one, we're going to hit start, and we're going to end up with a large square blank map. So I'm in here on a big blank square map. I'm basically in the center of the map, which is where I want to stay for this example. And I'm going to flip over to a website called terrain.party. This is uh, T E R R A I N dot P A R T Y. And this is a height map grabber. And when you first load this, we're over here by Helsinki and Stockholm, and we have this little square here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of this square by clicking a bunch of times until it's the maximum size, which is 60 kilometers. Now we have a pretty big square. Now I need to drag that square over, and the map I'm working on is in West Virginia near the Hinton area. So I'm going to drop it right there, and then I'm going to zoom in on it and see where I am. And it'll be obvious why I'm picking this area in a minute. So what I want to do is I want to put the center of this area right here where these two... This is the New River. There is a small little road with a nice Google photo that goes over here where you can see the mountains off in the distance. So I'm going to put this right in the center here. Now, you can, you can show various maps based on your location. The, the uh, street maps is the default map, the open street map. If you're over the United States... You can do, use the USGS shaded relief map, uh, which is just a black and white image, and that'll tell you what you're going to get. You can also use the topographic imagery, which is kind of a combination of the two. Uh, we'll just keep it at open street map. It doesn't matter because what you download is not affected by what you choose here in map view. So we'll hit the export button here. It'll ask me to name it. I'm going to call it uh, the Hinton West Virginia uh, 60 kilometers so I remember that I captured it at 60 kilometers we'll say OK and it's going to put all the images together into a zip file and download it to your computer alright there we go it's right here I'm gonna open this up and you can see we have a number of map files or a number of PNG files and then we have a readme here that basically describes what each one is I'm using the merged file which is a combination of all of these the best of all of them really this USGS, if you're over the US, is very accurate as well, but the merged is a pretty safe file to use. I'm going to copy this file, and I'm going to paste it in my height maps directory, which is in your Steam installation directory, user data, your user number, the game number, which for Transport Fever 2 is 1066780, local height maps. So I'm going to paste it in here, and there's our Hinton, West Virginia map. And then I'm going to go back to Transport Fever 2. So now we're on our uh, flat map, uh, basically right in the center of the map here. And so I'm going to click on this button here. And that's going to take me to this. We're going to use Import. Uh, Hinton, West Virginia, 60 kilometers is the one I did. you got to click off and click back on. This looks okay, but it starts out in a negative range, which makes the terrain look really weird. So I just go in here and I set this to zero. I'm going to set this to 300 through experimentation. That's not perfect, but it's okay. I'll show you why in just a second. I'm going to bump the water up until I get the new river basically covering the entire map. And that might be a little too much water. You can see that doesn't quite make it to the bottom. That definitely makes it to the bottom. Uh, we'll just use this as this example, water level of 55. And then we'll go ahead and hit the import button, and it's going to draw it. And uh, you can go ahead and close this after it. And I am right on where I want to be. If we look at this, and we look up here, we see these hills look pretty darn good. The only thing that I don't like about this that's probably too tall, or just the resolution isn't quite right, is that there is a town here, and there's a lot more flat area. So let's compare it with the actual map or the Google picture on that bridge that I was talking about. So you can see in the picture that the town is off to the right side of that and looking straight ahead you, you can see the mountains in this picture. The map isn't quite perfect but it's pretty darn good. So same hype map but this time I have it on a huge size Transport Fever 2 map setting the height to 300. 
doing the import here and uh, of course it's going to be a lot slower because the map's so much bigger but you can see now that we've stretched out these hills here so you have a wider flat area of course it still doesn't look quite like the picture in my opinion you can start to see the features especially and I can't put my mouse over the picture but if you see where the mouse is that little double dip hill there you can see it right up here but this seems to be not really there I don't I don't know exactly what this is looking at so I don't know whether it's just an error in the way that the uh, this particular height map was drawn or not you'll find a lot of these issues when you're trying to get height maps to look realistic I don't know exactly how this height map was generated but I think this gives a pretty good representation of the area so now we can paint it with trees to see how it looks like with uh, trees to try to get an, an idea of the scale we'll select the assets over here select the multiple trees and basically I like to do the brush size to maximum this to the hard circle brush just because it's really fast this way and we'll go ahead and paint and uh, this is a really fast way to uh, paint trees on our hillsides I really like the way this looks. Look, look, look how fast I can draw this stuff right and then right away you see well the scales not really right because some of these trees look almost as tall as the hills we could go back in here and say okay let's go back to now that we are using a bigger map let's let's go back to the full 500 hit the import button it'll redraw everything I've done and there we are and now uh, yeah we definitely have taller mountains and there you go and maybe that looks a little more realistic as far as being right along the river here in the in the middle of West Virginia so this gives you an idea of how to import height maps and some of the challenges that are presented by uh, using height maps and then trying to adapt them to the game there's other ways to make realistic looking hills so now let me show you how I do this using the tools inside the map editor that looks almost as good if not better I'm gonna use the height map texture tool there's some built-in height maps that work with this texture tool I'm gonna to use tempered hill I am going to set it to the hard circular brush I'm gonna crank the brush size all the way up and the strength all the way up and then I'm going to rotate it until I make sure that the hill is up and down in the direction that I'm going and I'm simply going to drag back and forth and you can just do this over and over again and because you're using a texture you're going to get a bumpy surface that looks fairly realistic in other words you're not going to get um, just round bumps like you would if you just use the raise tool but basically you end up with something like this that looks fairly realistic it wasn't quite high enough for my taste so I simply took the raise tool I went ahead and selected this brush same strength and then I raised the whole thing and this brush is faster because you're not using the height map and you still keep the shape of the hills you can see how this works you still keep the shape that the height map brush gave but now you're raising the whole thing up higher so now let me show you what I did a whole map like this and let me show you how it ended up so here's how that map turned out and I think these hills just turned out great now um, I did a lot of individual raising and lowering and I tried to to create some variable areas here of uh, uh, steep valleys and then shallow valleys and I went ahead and I actually created some some uh, streams or creeks that go into the mountains here and kind of curve behind the hillside and end as you would if you were actually working on a model railroad and uh, no glue smell with uh, transport fever and this also is using experimental map sizes so because I'm showing this let me go ahead and show you how to turn on experimental map sizes really quick here so on the screen you see a copy of the settings.lua file that is sitting also in the steam user data your user number and the game number for transport fever 2 in the local folder and then the settings file and there is that setting there called experimental map sizes that is true in this example that starts out false you set it to true and you save it and then when you start the game you can use experimental map sizes so let's take a look at what that gives you so now with those experimental sizes turned on you see that uh, the map sizes range from tiny all the way up to megalomaniac 
And the map formats, rather than just the 1 to 1, 1 to 2, and 1 to 3, it also adds 1 to 4 and 1 to 5. 1 to 5 makes the really narrow. If I remember correctly, I'm using a medium 1 to 5, which is a very long and narrow map. All right, that's all I have for this tutorial. This isn't necessarily the best way to do it, but hopefully it gives you some ideas for how you can create maps using the new Transport Fever 2 map editor with both height maps and the brushes. On the screen now should be a link to my first map tutorial for Transport Fever 2, which covers things like creating towns and road networks and some of the other features in the map editor that I didn't cover here. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you later.